Hello again, Struck Pub Diabo for soap on battle tests are almost here, and I felt motivated to make some pre launch theory crafted semi builds that should be good for fresh into end game characters when the game is here. And I also plan to evolve them into fully fledged builds when the game launches, as well as keep them updated when we get rebalance updates. This is one such setup for the rogue class called Shadow Trapper. The beta tests will only let us reach level 25 and only let us play in the first act slash zone called Fractured Peaks, so those builds would be more suitable for um, a player um, in the actual post launch game um, and ideally. Uh, characters around level 50 plus or 60 plus. I have used 50-ish, uh, 60-ish skill points when uh, making the build instead of the full 100, so that uh, those can be used to jump. The build can be used to jumpstart the player's post-story and game grind. I've also made a spreadsheet, actually a couple of spreadsheets for for uh, for um, one for those builds and one for the skill points in general. You can see the links below that have shortlisted the active and passive skills plus the legendary aspects that work well with the build so one can spend extra skill points on the way to level 100 into those remaining um, passive skills or switch around their active skills with the alternatives I've provided. As for the legendary aspects, I've included 20-ish uh, aspects, so out of the 10-ish you need, uh, out of the 10 you need, uh, you can um, work around some some alternative ways based on the extra aspects I've shortlisted for the build or just use some of the tempo and the, the other fewers as a temporary solution until you grind the one that's best in SWAT uh, based on my suggestion. So I hope you enjoyed this set, buckle up and let's go. Here we are at the Shadow Trapper skill points location. You would see a hefty 69, you know what I mean, 69 skill points. Um, there's still room to grow it, I've included things to grow. Um, I will mention which points are not that urgent, so you maybe um, won't take them right away. Um, it's a Shadow Trapper, meaning Shadow Damage, Shadow Trap, Death Trap. Um, keep in mind, you can also make it a Poison Trapper, which probably would be the more obvious choice for people, because you can imbue the Shadow Trap with Poison and make it a Poison Trap in the first place. Um, but I wanted to make it a shadow build because um, I think it's a nice thing, shadows and uh, um, the assassin type of playstyle we've taken here with dual wielded weapons um, and the traps. Although trapper builds probably with ranged weapons might uh, be a little bit better to play, hopefully this uh, weird build um, is to your liking. Keep in mind where you see orange, it means you can only take one of the two upgrades, um, not uh, not both of them. Uh, whereas uh, with some skill, with some um, with some uh, passives, you have two uh, choices, but I think you can take both of them, from what I've uh, read online. So uh, blade shift is our um, uh, resource generator with enhanced blade shift and with primary blade shift, um, which uh, while it's active, um, gain 15% to all non-physical resistances and reduce the duration of control impairing effects. I prefer this over um, moving through an enemy while Blade Shift is active refreshes its duration, which is 3 seconds um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, after moving through 5 enemies, your next Blade Shift will immobilize enemies for mm, 2 seconds. If you don't like Blade Shift, I've included alternative skill to take, which is Invigorating Strike. So don't be um, alarmed where you see what this second skill here, why does he have to. I didn't put points into it, but you can put those points from this into that. If you have problems with generating and regenerating spirit, then I would put a point here and uh, now you have a choice. Do you want this? Do you want more? Um, um, do you want um, to, to make enemies vulnerable while you have below 50% energy? Or I would actually go for that one. Um, uh, additionally, granting a lucky hit chance and hitting a crowd control enemy or injured enemy, increasing this bonus to, to double. So um, I personally would go this, this, this. Now core skills, Flurry. Flurry is the core skill of choice. With combo points, um, if you go for combo points uh, specialization, you, you get increased damage and grant 30% 30 uh, 30 uh, attack speed um, bonus. The damage is 95, 114 or 133% uh, for um, those seconds you see here. 1.5, 3, 
and 4.5 depending on how many combo points you had when you used it. This costs 17 energy so not so much and I love that skill animation. This increases the radius it's pretty solid and um, now you can get healed when you damage a crowd control to vulnerable enemy and there will be plenty believe me with this build crowd control and vulnerable and enemies to hit. Uh, if you don't need the healing then there's this chance to slow enemies and um, also immobilize them. Um, and the immobilize is only if it was a crit strike. Then sturdy, you gain melee damage reduction, definitely a must have very early on if you're struggling and you might be struggling uh, because it's a melee build. In fact, I personally wouldn't level this as a melee build, but rather as a ranged build and then swap around level 20 something to the melee setup. Um, because I think leveling as a melee build on a rogue um, is definitely hard. I've seen some leaked footage of, of a player from China leveling a rogue and he was struggling, but although he was making very bad choices, but he was struggling with melee and as soon as he found a good ranged weapon and switched to ranged skills, he had no problems then. Well, no problems is, was a strong word to say. So this one can also heal. If you need the healing, put it early. If not, save it for later. Um, you need good crit strike for this to work. So if you don't have good crit strike, there's no point in getting it um, for that little bit of extra heal here and there. But it's uh, good to consider it. Um, Another step for movement speed, I don't think it's needed right away, but if you really, really, really need it, sure. But this is something to grow the build into later. You have um, 41, um, 31 more points to put on the way to 100, and there's, again, places where you can put them. Cow drops, one of our traps, close enemies, um, they take increased damage from all sources uh, when they are in the cow drops, um, not while they're affected by the swap, but while they're inside. And this one, Crit strike chance against enemies inside the cow drops again. So if they're inside and you put the death trap in there as well, uh, perfect. I would not recommend uh, using this. We are not a cold build. Um, weapon mastery is good for every build. Three points here for uh, daggers uh, and swords, which would be uh, we would be dual wielding. I'm not sure whether you can only dual wield daggers or whether you can wield dual wield swords or whether you can mix and match a dagger and a sword. Um, but if you can mix and match, I would recommend mix and matching so you can get both bonuses for daggers and swords. Um, this also gives you vulnerable enemies take multiplicative damage, which I'm assuming is regardless of what weapon you use. And uh, healthy is over 80% HP on, a, on, a, on an NPC, so healthy enemies have 80% or more life. Um, now, Dark Shroud is an alternative to Poison Trap or Stealth. I've included options, uh, but I would still rather play it with a Poison Trap. But if, if you have options, if you don't want to play, play as Poison Trap um, and have uh, all three traps, uh, then, then go for Stealth or Dark Shroud. Uh, Dark Shroud is good, it synergizes um, in a way with the build. And so would be stealth with that energy generation. But poison trap is here. Solid damage, but over nine seconds, so not right away. It immobilizes enemies um, for two seconds when it activates. Um, and I took this thing. 20% chance to reset your imbuement skill cooldowns. I've included imbue for shadow, but you might want to get imbue for poison as well. I'll, I'll talk about this in a moment. Um, and this one, not bad. Enemies take a multiplicative increase poison damage while standing in poison trap. That means you have to... This is good for uh, imbue poison setups. Because you would be imbuing um, things like flurry and, and things like death trap. And they would be imbued. Um, so not every skill can be imbued. And keep that in mind. Cow drops, as far as I know, cannot be imbued. And so goes for blade shift. Um, and imbuement skill is the skill that imbues, in our um, case, imbue weapon shadow. Uh, for stealth, I would take this here, um, and then probably take this one. Um, and for dark shroud, I would take this, and obviously, um, then I would probably, probably, um, if, if you can keep this up, take this. If you, if you can keep those two, two shadows, otherwise take that one. So um, this one's great, and this one's great. Take them, 
Um, I think those are must must get thing for the setup. Um, if you don't think you want that, maybe put one point and then put three points here. But I think you would want that. To make sure your initial hit is 18% uh, stronger. I think this is 18% with the three points, not 18% per point. Um, using skills with cooldown increases your dot chance. Good for later on. Um, it's not much, even if it's three percent per point, nine percent only, and only for two seconds, and only when using skills with cooldowns. Um, imbue weapon shadow. So, um, enemy struck by your next two non-basic melee or range skills, and we have melee skills with the dual wield stuff. Um, we'll um, get um, will will be inflicted. Um, and they would explode. That's the initial explosion which is mentioned earlier. Um, and direct damage to infected enemies deals an additional um, damage. And enemies infected by Shadow Imbue. Uh, there's a wiki hit chance, there's 30% chance to create a mini explosion, which is not the main explosion for extra damage. And here it says the primary explosion, this main explosion here, will make them vulnerable. So again, we have sources to make them vulnerable. If you don't need this, and you think, okay, I have plenty of other ways to make enemies vulnerable, then um, they take multiplicative increased non-physical damage for 8 seconds. Very good thing to consider. Potency, your imbuement skill effects are 10% uh, multiplicative stronger. Not sure if that's per point, um, but you might want to take this uh, eventually, not right away. Again, we already have 69 points spent. So that's for a later investment. And then this one, uh, imbuement skills gain increased crit strike chance. Uh, if that's 5 per point, lovely. Um, or the cooldowns, because this is a 9% cooldown. The cooldown of your imbuement skills are reduced by 5%, getting 15% cooldown reduction. 10% uh, would be 0 0.9. So uh, 0 0.35 or whatever, with 15%, I'd, I'd rather take the crit chance. This one is good as well, but again, those are not a priority. And this one is not a priority. This one is actually a priority if you go poison imbue. Otherwise, uh, I don't think you need it um, much. But you still have poisoned enemies from poison trap because poison trap does not get imbued into shadow. Whereas shadow could get imbued into poison, like death trap can get imbued into poison, which is why most people would probably want to go poison with traps, unlike this weird build I made. Lucky hit shadow damage has up to 10% chance to stun uh, for 0.5 seconds, and each time you kill an enemy with shadow damage, you generate 10 energy, so uh, another uh, synergy with energy and shadow, and shadow imbue. Death trap is shadow, flurry will be imbued for shadow, um, so there's that to consider. Um, with that setup. Um, now, Death, um, Death Trap now gets a sucky sucky upgrade, pulls in the enemies, pull them in, boom, um, use the use the other trap and do flurry uh, on the pulled in grouped up enemies. And then if Death Trap kills an enemy, its cooldown is reduced by 10 lovely seconds. Uh, on a 45 second cooldown, 10 second reduction, um, it's it's wonderful. Um, if you if you kill five enemies, you can immediately cast it again. Uh, so there is that. But I'm not sure if for every enemy uh, killed you get it, or or whether it can only happen once per cast. If it only happens once, ten seconds is still great, but you still have thirty five seconds to worry about and to try and reduce um, in another way. Innervation, lucky hit. Chance to gain energy, use it if you need energy. I think we will need energy uh, because there wasn't much generation um, on the way to here that we've taken. Uh, if you think you don't need it, don't take it or maybe just put a single point. This one is nice. Every 100 energy you spend, you grant 10% um, um, increased lucky hit chance, which would actually trigger this one more often for 5 seconds. Um, I'm not sure if that's 10% per... Um, per point or 10% when maxed out. This one's also not bad, but I'd rather take that one. Then in Rush, while moving, you gain multiplicative increased energy regeneration, which is lovely. While at or above 50% maximum energy gain uh, increased movement speed, while below or uh, maximum energy gain 15% increased attack speed. I don't like this much. I'd rather take this one, but some people might want this. 
After moving 15 meters, your next attack deals 7 multiplicative increased damage. In general, I wouldn't invest into this skill much, maybe just in the in the first one uh, and those later as fewers on the way to 100. Trap mastery, build around me, think for the build. When poison or death trap activates, you gain 4% increased crit track chance against vulnerable and crowd controlled enemies for 4 seconds. You see why this is great for the build uh, in a moment when we talk about legendary powers. After math, after using an ultimate skill, restore energy. And if we use that and consider this cooldown reduction, and um, that's good to keep our energy up. And exposure, the, the one and only trap specialization. Um, dealing direct damage to an enemy affected by a trap skill has up to 75% chance to make them vulnerable for 4 seconds and reduce the cooldowns of your trap skills by 0 0.5 seconds. Um, and that's for every enemy um, that you hit that's affected by a trap, which is death trap and poison trap. And it, uh, it has a uh, chance to reduce all cooldowns, including the death trap cooldown itself. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the legendary powers. If you're watching this video, you're probably um, new to the game. Everyone uh, except people who played in the beta would be new to the game. And you might need information regarding what legendary powers are and how they work. So I'll try to quickly explain it, um, um, what it is. When legendary items drop, when items drop, they could be legendary. And when it's a legendary item, it will have a legendary power, legendary aspect on it. And though they, there are different legendary aspects, leg different ones uh, in terms of categories. There's defensive, offensive, mobility, utility, and resource. And you can take a legendary aspect of one category, for example, resource, for example, ravenous aspect, uh, and Take it from a helmet, put it on a ring. Take it from an amulet, put it on a helmet, and so on. So take the one from the item um, that it dropped on and put it on another item in the same category. Those are the categories. You can check the spreadsheet. It's uh, There's a link in the description to this and um, the other spreadsheet uh, where I have some more information uh, with the full skill trees. Um, now... There's other ways to get them, not just from drops, you can get them by completing a dungeon, by uh, finishing, uh, beating the final boss of a dungeon. Um, so, there's various dungeons uh, in each zone, and um, here in this list I've tried to include the, the zone where the dungeon is, um, where the aspect drops, and if possible the dungeon as well. So you finish the dungeon, you beat the final boss, and then in the Codex of Power, which is a user interface, you would get a new entry unlocked for that one power. Um, and uh, you would be able to go to the NPC um, that, um, that lets you swap aspects from one item to another. And then there will be an option to select Codex of Power rather than, um, than from one item to another. And you can take the power from the Codex. But the powers in the Codex always are the minimum row possible. So if something can give you between five and ten crit, uh, between five and ten percent increased crit chance, the codex versions will give you the five percent, whereas item drops could give you six, seven, and so on. So the codex is as a temporary fewer. Um, if RNG shows your middle finger, you show it up RNG's butthole um, until you get the the better road version as a drop. So it's a good way to, to fill in uh, a build, to patch up a missing power. Now, you have 10 item slots, 9 if you're not using one hand offhand, but rather two hand. Here is the best in slot. Best in slot for this build. Here is um, a short list of 23 powers, um, 12 of which are quite specific. The, the rest are universal that I have shortlisted. Why 23 when there's only 10 needed? So you have options, alternatives, before you get something else, uh, be before you get the best in SWAT, you have alternatives you could put in the different SWAT, or you can just mess around with um, with the build, make it your own, um, and test things. So I've included plenty of synergies there. So um, let's go through the things I have included um, as the best in SWAT. Aspect of shared misery and explosive verf are the two utility skills I've included. I've put shared misery on the amulet because the amulet gives you 50% effectiveness. Two-handed weapons give you 100% effectiveness, by the way. Um, that's to, to make up for sacrificing the offhand extra power. So shared misery 
I love it. I, I've used it in almost all of those builds, uh, the first batch of five builds. And it's when you hit a crowd control enemy, there's a 30% chance that crowd control effect spreads to another unaffected nearby enemy. So that's how you can spread stuns um, and uh, other uh, other crowd controls, slows, immobilize, whatever. Um, so 50% uh, effectiveness increases that chance and it's nice. That's why it's on the amulet. Explosive Verf. Uh, it's a trap synergy. It's a trap synergy. Your grenades. And what counts as a grenade, by the way? First of all, there will be grenades uh, here uh, with Trickster's Aspect. There's also in the skill tree, and there's another skill which I didn't think would, called Blinding Smoke, uh, which counts as a grenade. Um, and if you decide to, for whatever reason, use that instead of Poison Trap, um, it, it could work well there. Um, and your grenades will also count as trap skills. Wherever you arm a trap or drop grenade, you gain 10% increased movement speed for 3 seconds. I love this utility. I think it's a must have. And uh, later on we'll see how it synergizes with some other grenade uh, related things. Um, and trap related things. Now, Wind Striker aspect is the mobility of choice. There's also Ghost Walker. Uh, I'll show you both of them, um, and I think it doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, critical Strike Grant movement speed for one second, uh, the duration can be extended as, as, as long as you crit more. While Ghost Walker is good if you need um, an escape mechanic, um, kind of moving freely through enemies, but you already move freely through enemies with some of your skills, so it might not be needed, and this only triggers when you're under 40% total life, which is definitely when you would want to escape. But uh, I think with this setup, we, we might be fine with just the, the Wind Striker um, aspect. But uh, it's not a must-have, uh, so pick one of the two you like, or just don't use either of them, and maybe maybe put Explosive Verve here, so you can have an extra offensive thing to put there. Um, I would suggest the damage to stunt enemies, such as Pummeling um, um, or, or such as Retribution. Uh, and pummeling and retribution um, work very well together, so you might want to consider that if you if you sacrifice your wind striker and put uh, explosive verve here, uh, then you put um, pummeling or retribution here, and then you might want to sacrifice one of the other ones. Um, let's talk about the defensive, then I'll talk about the offensive. Um, by the way, there's also aspect of Doombro as a as a choice for um, the resource generation, but I didn't um, use it. But it's it's a possible choice the build that could work well. Now aspect of might and aspect of disobedience. They each have their own interesting um, um interesting uses. Might is basic skills grant 25% damage reduction for four seconds. So with uh, blade shift. Uh, and aspect of disobedience enemies afflicted with a damage over time effect deal 20% less damage to you and since we have poison that would be triggering uh, often enough. Now here um, you can either go, um, you, you can do something like cheat's aspect um, and uh, you can put disobedience and cheat aspect um, instead of might and ravenous aspect here. Although um, it's up to you. Uh, I did put disobedience, I did put might and I did put ravenous aspect but you might want to put cheat's aspect instead of ravenous or cheat's aspect instead of might or even cheats aspect instead of disobedience. Uh, so there's options, as I mentioned. Um, now, um, I've suggested um, this on a weapon or amulet. And on a weapon, because if you do go to hand um, to handed, which I don't recommend for this build, it's a dual wield build. Um, um, if you do go for the amulet, like moving shared misery elsewhere, like moving shared misery here, moving explosive verve here, or moving shared misery there, um, why did I want this? Because Cotrops also throws a cluster of stun grenades that explode and deal X damage. That would uh, give 50% effectiveness of the damage. And it stuns enemies. Maybe it will stun the enemies for even more. Um, but I think this is not a good thing, not a bad thing to consider in the amulet slot. Um, the trickster. Blast Trapper's aspect 
lucky hit dealing direct damage to enemies affected by your trap skills has a 30% chance to make them vulnerable. Um, again, more ways to make enemies vulnerable. Definitely would love this in the build. Um, if you if you don't, um, <laughs> not much to say about it, but uh, I think it's must have. Um, aspect of corruption: your imbuements have 20% multiplicative increased potency against vulnerable enemies. Lovely synergy with all the ways we can make enemies vulnerable. Must have this one. And unstable imbuements in the offhand. Casting a skill that is imbued creates an explosion around you, dealing uh, end damage of the X damage of the same type. So this one is flexible. So if you decide to to remove uh, Wind Walker, put explosive verb here and go for the for the um, uh, retribution um, for the pummeling and retribution combo, then you can uh, maybe remove uh, unstable imbuements. And since um, this what would be emptied up, put um, put the other one there and have in, uh, retribution and uh, and pummeling there. And that's for all the options. That's for everything. Um, this one is for when you have energy problems. Uh, suggestion. This one if you if you need uh, survivability. Again, hopefully this helps you. Uh, this would be useful to people who are playing the game on launch on the beta. It's not going to be that great. You only have access to fractured peaks. And there aren't that many of those suggested powers. You only have 25 points, so that means no specialization, but an ultimate skill on walk still. Um, hope, you li hope you liked it. If you have questions, if you want to see builds around other skills, let me know in the comments. To get notified when I upload more content like this one or other builds and guides for water and not so water games, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out on notifications. As well as uh, keep in mind there's something called memberships on YouTube which lets you be a paying member for my channel to get access to perks such as emotes and badges made by me as well as the option to get one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring for the very basics of Adobe Photoshop, Premiere and After Effects. And memberships can be cancelled at any time if you no longer want to be a member. Uh, thanks for watching all the way until the end, Struck Club. Keep it cool until next time, and goodbye.